Insidious, The Red Door is the Chex Notes fifth installment to the Insidious franchise. That can't be right. There's five of these? Well, I only saw one of them, but I was inclined to go out and see this one for no reason at all, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it now. Here's the deal, my wife and I had some free time. She wanted to see a scary movie. Insidious the Red Door was still playing in theaters, so I thought, yeah, let's go to it and I'll review it on the channel. I legitimately didn't know there was a bunch of sequels to this. They, they completely went under the radar for me. I remember the first Insidious movie being okay. Definitely watchable, had a couple scares here and there. The, the villain kind of threw me off because he looked like Darth Maul. That, that was the biggest takeaway from Insidious. The main stars are Patrick Wilson and Rose Byrne. Patrick Wilson's also part of the Conjuring franchise. So it's a little confusing because they're both horror films that have multiple sequels. I can see how general audiences would kind of get the two confused. Conjuring, I think, is a far better film property outside of the last one. The last Conjuring wasn't so great. And neither is Insidious the Red Door. In fact, it's pretty lame all around. This time, Patrick Wilson steps behind the camera for, I believe, his first directorial debut. It's shot well enough. There, there, there's some solid cinematography going on, but it's it's nothing you know to write home about. I do think the dream sequence stuff is a little too uh, colorful and poppy and and silly. It kind of reminds me of that old Fred Savage Howie Mandel vehicle, uh, Little Monsters, I believe. Not not a very good movie in my opinion, but yeah, it kind of has that look and feel when they go into the nightmare world known as the Further. It's called the Further because the further you go in, the harder it is to get out. And that, that's full of like ghosts and ghouls and goblins and dead people. Just, just really not great. Not great individuals. Seedy individuals, you could say, hanging out in the further. They're actually souls of people that haven't been able to move on with their lives because they have unfinished business. Listen, again, I only saw the first movie. Nothing must have happened in two, three, or four because this felt like a sequel to the first that takes place nine years later. When the movie starts, it has a flashback to one of the films. I, I thought it was the first, but maybe it's the second, third, or fourth. It, again, really doesn't matter if you saw them or not. It takes place nine years later and it's focused on the son who's going off to college. Lots of baggage with this family. The dad is suffering from a cloudiness in his memory. He can't remember things from the last year or so. And the son is now getting these nightmare visions. And this is all going to come to a head when he gets into that art class and that dumb teacher is going to tell him to count to 10 and really get inside of himself. Dig deep down to draw something profound from the heart, from the soul. And so he draws this dark, scary looking door. Wait, the movie's called The Red Door. Oh, I just put it together. That's the door that they're talking about in the title. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, subscribe. Bad jokes aside, I will point out Dalton, who's the aforementioned college kid. Great freehand. Kid knows how to work his way around a piece of paper. Kid knows how to use the canvas well. And we're going to spend a good amount of time watching him draw stuff. Close-ups of the charcoal as he's moving along the page, kind of blowing stuff away, wiping things, smearing things, blending, really getting this door to come out nicely. Add a little blood in there too for good measure. Just make it, make it pop. If you come to these movies for some Rose Byrne action, you're a big fan of her, you're going to be disappointed. She has very, very minimal screen time in this thing. It's really all about Dalton this time and his relationship with his dad, Josh, played by Patrick Wilson. Sinclair Danielle joins the cast this time around. She plays Chris, a new friend for Dalton to hang out with at school and go on little misadventures. I can see some people finding Sinclair's character a little annoying. I found her lovable. I found her very charming. In a world full of really boring, sad sack individuals, Chris was a breath of fresh air. Really punchy, really outgoing, sarcastic, just, just an all around pleasure to watch. But unfortunately, she's like the only thing that's interesting about this film. It is very slow moving. It takes a lot of time to tell the story that I guess people have seen four times already and I've seen once. And that's just to get these characters to a place where they're back in the further again. A very formulaic flick, nothing exciting happening at all. From a scare standpoint, we have three or four jump scares. The environments though, nothing about this is really that intense. There's one scene, I guess, where the dad gets a, a CAT scan or something. He's inside the machine. It's going, that part was pretty solid, but we're talking about maybe four minutes of runtime for that and that alone. So yeah, all around the atmosphere, the music, everything's just kind of mediocre to bad 
more so on the bad side. This is not a movie you need to go out and see. I don't even think you need to watch it just full stop. Unless you're really hardcore into the Insidious franchise and you're looking for closure, this will provide that. But for me, I closed that red door like nine years ago. Well, there you have it. My thoughts on Insidious the Red Door. Did you see it and had a completely different experience? Let me know in the comments below. Please like the video if you enjoyed yourself here. And if you really enjoyed yourself, think about subscribing to the channel as I post movie reviews every single week. would love to have more people stick around. And if you super duper like what I'm doing, you can support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or right here via that join button. There's a dollar tier, there's a, there's a $30 tier. Whatever you want to give, I appreciate. It's a one-man operation. I film, edit, do it all myself. So yeah, let's keep the lights on, keep me making these videos. And your support absolutely does that. All right, hopefully I catch you next time. Take care.